All right, boys, so there's the 103 bridge. You can see there's a little shallow point right here. That's Dorenzo Creek. Sorry about the, the glare. We're going to put the drone in the air, and we're going to fly you to the 103. We've done a lot of idling because I'm going to run back out of here. But let me just give you a couple of waypoints as we came up. So there you go. 31, 34, 7, 60. 94, 456, 23. I'm not hitting exactly on the waypoint, but I'm really close. 31, 34, 844, 94, 45, 672. Now, we're going straight towards the bridge, correct? Uh, you're going, yeah, kind of hug that right bank, if you would. Just okay. actually kind of right at that cypress tree. And then from the side to the bridge. All right. Now, uh, there's some wood right here. So you really want to hit these waypoints or stay close to these waypoints. And I'm talking about big wood. So 31, 35, 255, and 94, 45, 901. And then the final waypoint is going to be just off that point. And again, that's a real shallow point to my right right there off the starboard side. Let's get that one dead on. So right there, 31, 353, 338, and 94, 45, 963. And now we're going to do drone footage for a ways. And you can guys, let's do a quick cutaway to our paper map and show you what we're taking off from and what we're going to fly. Okay, guys, so we're up the Angelina Arm. Give you an idea of a reference where we are. Stanley Creek. We've run up the Ewing Cut, which you can see right here on this old map. I talked in the last video about where you can get one of these maps. It's the hook and line map. So we run up here, made that dog leg. I idled this because I had just hit one right out here. I idled it. I actually run back out, but I ran back out literally 70 miles an hour. Got everything I could out of the water. So this is Duranzo Creek. We're going to show you that in the next video. But what we're going to do now is we're going to fly to the 103 bridge, which is, you know, the question I get the most. I'm going to tell you, well, I'll tell you what I'll tell you in a flyover video, but I'm going to show you a little bit more of exactly where we're sitting now looking at some old Google Earth photo, uh, footage uh, pictures. How about that? Here we go. Okay, so that that uh, untitled place mark right there is exactly where the boat is sitting. Now, to, to really give you a sense of what this looks like, let's jump back to the November of 2011 Google Earth images. So this is the lake's 11, 12, 13 feet low, and and that's what you see right there. Now, let's fly a little bit of this, and then I'm going to come back to the Google Images and show you all a little uh, additional information. Okay, guys, I'm going to go back and forth here between uh, uh, audio I shot here at the beautiful Zavala World Headquarters studio. I'm sure you all know I have a soundstage and everything here uh, versus what we shot in the boat. So, But it's only about one, uh, literally right out a mile and a half from where we took off to the 103 bridge. And then it's only another, say, two miles up to where you usually start fishing once you're up in the river up there so uh this is i'll tell you what we got a little bit of audio from the boat here so let's jump back to that audio and then i'll come back and we'll complete this in the studio and you can see you probably can't see the drone but he's beeping out there headed right to the power poles and i'm talking about electrical poles not power poles those are power poles those are electrical poles Okay, boys, back in the uh, studio here. So, uh, so this is this is pretty much. So I'm coaching him where I want him to fly, and this is pretty much the flight line that I would typically run. And I'm gonna, I normally run just left of that pole right there. So let me jump back to Google Earth imaging, and I'll show you kind of the line we run once we get to the power line right here. And you can see we're really close to the 103 bridge up here. So let's jump back to Google Earth images right here, guys. Okay, so that's pretty much the line I fly right there. I say I fly that I run, and and I'll tell you, I don't I don't run specific waypoints. I just run it. I don't even have a trail up there. I've just run it for a long time, and that's kind of where I run to. And you know, you can see that on your on your Lake Master maps if you have it set up right. And then from there, I just run straight to the 103 bridge. So it's pretty much. There's a little jog right there I make, but not too much of one. And, you know, having watched this video now, I don't, I think it's just kind of a straight run up there and uh, at pool anywhere. Certainly not right now. Okay, so back to the air. So, again, uh, you know, and I like that he dropped down and went under the power lines right there. I had asked him to do that if he was comfortable and he could still see the drone. So he was. And it was interesting. He would look at the drone and he'd look at the screen. He'd look at the drone and he'd look at the screen. And he was really... 
able to judge uh, his, of course he could see his elevation too, but he was able to see all this stuff. So now I'm going to show you all a little bit of Google imaging here in just a second. So this was shot back in 2011 and I, I don't think I probably saw it for the first time. I don't know when Google Earth actually posted the imagery I'm about to show you, but it was, I would bet it was 13 or so. And since I saw this imagery, well, first off, well, let's go to the imagery. You know what? Let's do that. So this is the 2011 footage I'm referencing. And uh, number one, you have to assume because of the squareness of those, I would call them pits, that that's where they dug dirt to build the road and the bridge out with. But I, every since I have seen this footage, I have thought I'm going to go up for one day and spend you know, a day fishing around that stuff. I mean, it's pretty easy to mark all this stuff, all these little points, all these little hard spots. You get a lot of current under that bridge and it's just something I've never done. But maybe this will be my motivation to go back up there and do it again. But um, when you get above the 103 bridge right there, you're gonna see here in just a second, that's the Marion Slough that swings immediately to the left. And then kind of more straight up goes the Angelina River and they both lead back to about the same place. So uh, let's go back to the aerial footage. All right, so anyway, that's something that I've always wanted to go up there and, and spend the day fishing around, but not easy to get up there usually, and certainly not easy to get up there right now. But, you know, again, across through here, there's just not a whole lot of timber. So at pool, uh, now I have heard some guys have hit some stuff up there recently, and even the locals are spooky about running this stretch now. But, you know, you put five more feet of water on top of this, and it looks pretty wide open. Now, I will tell you, the only place I've ever run aground is above the 103 bridge, and I've done it three times. Did it twice in the same day trying to run the river back in, like, 2015. And then another time, I just cut across something I thought I could come ac cut across, and the water was a little low, and you can't do it. So once you get above this bridge, you would generally just kind of run straight right of that point you're seeing in the in the fore in the future up there or in the top of the screen sorry and then you kind of veer back to the left and you're going up the angelina river but man once you get up here uh, there's i see guys run it as many different ways as i know guys that little point on the left right there is three quarters of a mile above the 175 or excuse me the 103 bridge and then you would be looking right there kingstown would be on your right uh, kind of up at the top of the picture, and Marion's Ferry would be in the trees up there on the left. So, and then there's another big creek. I can't think of the name of it, but up there on the right as well. And, uh, you know, there's been years there's been pads and grass and all kinds of crazy stuff up here, and then there's years there's nothing up here. And it, I think it largely varies according to how much flow and how high the water is in the springtime, whether stuff can really catch a hold and grow or not. But so we are approaching about two and a quarter miles from the boat right here. And I think just right here in a second, he's going to spin it around and we're going to fly it back. But we're going to fly it back, back kind of into the sunrise or into the sun. It's still pretty early in the day, but uh, it's a whole lot harder to see going back the other way. But I'm going to show it to you anyway. And I'm sure you guys have noticed we're well left now where I would typically run, although I've seen guys run over here. But uh, you can see there's, there's a fair amount of wood up here. And, a lot of it's big old hard hardwood around the creeks and around the rivers and around the sloughs. And so you've got hardwoods and you've got old cypress trees and you've got stuff that you just flat don't want to hit. But a lot of fishable water up here. I'm going to just let you guys enjoy the footage now. All right, so he just spun it around, and he's going to come back around now. We're looking right back at the, the 103 bridge, and we would be on that point we just crossed out there to the right. And he's just looking across that big bay where those uh, where those creeks and those sloughs run. And I believe that's a big group of pelicans right there. It's either called a scoop or a pod or a squadron or a pouch, according to Wikipedia. 
See, there's a high spot right there. And he's just going to fly us all the way back to the boat. In case you're wondering, so we are right at 30 miles on a straight line from Umphrey's Pavilion right here. We're about 13 and a half miles above the 147 bridge, but both of them are longer trips than that because it is not exactly a straight line up there and certainly not a straight line if you got any wind at all and you got to run one bank or another. So, you know, even even running wide open, it's it's a good solid 35 minutes up there. Uh, probably even a little bit lower, longer than that if you're in a Ranger. Sorry, I'm making fun of my old Ranger there. But, you know, according to what you run and how fast you can run, it's 35 to 40, I mean, minutes. Of course, if you're running four-footers, it could be three hours up there. Uh, so 30 miles up from the from Umphrey's and about 13 and a half miles up there from Castle Boykin. So it's a pretty good run to get to the 103 bridge. All right, guys, I will say that it's amazing to me that uh, Jason will put a $3,000 drone up over the water and fly it that far, and he could see it. I couldn't even see the thing part of the time, but a uh, really impressive bit of flying there uh, to fly it that far out away from the boat and be able to bring it right back to the boat, which, you know, some of this is just really good software in the, in the drone. But hope you enjoyed that. We're going to do a short video Thursday of Duranzo Creek. And also some tips Jason gave for flying or specifically for landing the drones for those of us that are want to learn how to do it. And then we're going to follow up next week with some really the best footage we shot, which is going to be in Stanley Creek. So stay tuned, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And we will see y'all really, really soon.